Welcome back to the program, everyone. My name is Dr. Dan, and I'm a pharmacist turned weight management specialist. Now, every time I make a blog or a video or pretty much any time that I talk about a drug and there's a pharmaceutical company obviously involved, I have about three to ten trolls that will pop up and say, well, you must be getting paid by Big Pharma, you're in the pocket of Big Pharma, you're a pharma shill, yada, 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 yada. And I always ask, you know, is, is there something that they know that I don't know? Is there, is there a check in the mail? Is there, is there some money actually coming my way? And, and if so, um, where, where is it? Like, can I call somebody? Is there something that I can do to speed up this process? The reason being is that I've still got a lot of student debt. I'm still a relatively new clinician to the world. And um, yeah, school was not cheap. So if, uh, if Big Pharma has caught a check coming my way, I will happily accept it, yeah. The charity of Dan is what we can say is wide open, if you will. Anywho, in order to kind of prove and really show that I'm not in the pocket of Big Pharma, we're going to talk about the bad or the side effects that can sometimes come with these anti-obesity medications. And in fact, this is going to be probably a couple of different blogs because there's a lot to cover in this realm of things and to really distill out what do we actually need to be worried about and what are the major concerns with some of these black box warnings and stuff like that. And in particular, I'm going to focus on the GLP-1 receptor agonists, such as Ozempic, and I've got Saxenda around here somewhere. Ozempic, Saxenda, and Wagovi is the new guy that's coming to market now. Now, I am fully aware that I'm probably still going to get comments like, you know, Big Pharma has paid you to make a negative post about them because, you know, they want to keep up with the lies and... I mean, there's no, there's no keeping up with the drama that goes into that. So it is what it is, but I want to make you as aware as possible um, and provide you with, you know, as much of the comprehensive information as I possibly can so that you can make the most informed decision with your clinician, your family care provider, with your family pharmacist, and for you, fundamentally, what's going to work for you and your lifestyle. So before we dive into things, though, a little housekeeping thing. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss another episode that comes out on my channel. All right, enough ranting from me. Let's talk about actual side effects. And in particular, what, what are side effects? What do we even define them as being? Now, I find with side effects that people either talk about them too much, so they're either talking about it in such a way that it seems like the drug is actual literal poison when there's probably multiple other factors that are going on there, or they talk about them too little, and it almost seems like maybe they're hiding something or trying to hold something back. What I really want to provide for you here is just the... The blanket terms here's the here's what's actually going on and what we actually need to be concerned about so the definition of a side effect is an effect that occurs secondary to the intended effect and this might be good or bad depending on the individual and the individual's perspective and whatever side effect that is it that occurs now i like to use the example of viagra because viagra was originally developed and studied for its effects in possibly lowering an individual's blood pressure and reducing an individual's chest pain such as angina what was found though is that viagra really wasn't all that effective at lowering blood pressure or reducing chest pain what it was found to be much more effective for was giving all of these older men erections a happy accident that may or may not have had a happy ending if you will now, literally anything that we are exposed to in our lives can cause side effects. Drinking water has a side effect of making you pee more. Chatting with relatives can either have the side effect of having fun and spending quality time with loved ones, or it can cause your ears to bleed and possibly break up the family if the topic of politics ends up coming up. You see what I mean? So let's dive into the side effects specifically with the GLP-1 receptor agonists such as Ozempic, Saxenda, and now Wegovy coming to the market. And like any class of medications, there are side effects they can cause. And the side effects of these drugs primarily come from their mechanism of action. In particular, the ability of these GLP-1 receptor agonists in slowing down how quickly food moves from our stomach to our small intestine. So food is basically sitting in your stomach for a longer period of time. In terms of weight management, well, this is a positive in the sense that food is sitting in your stomach for longer, so you get more satiated or fuller more quickly, and therefore you're inclined to eat less food. On the negative end of things, it can cause things like nausea, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, and in rare instances, usually when you've eaten too much, things like vomiting. 
These are the most common side effects with the GLP-1 receptor agonists, and it's very rare that an individual does not experience the, some of these side effects to some degree. Again, it's very individualized and everyone's gonna have a different experience, but most people will get some blip of, of a side effect of some kind. Some people it's like, oh, I, I burped, I had my little bit of indigestion today, and that's it. And other people it's been like projectile vomiting, the latter being much more rare. For most individuals though, it kind of falls in the middle, and fortunately, these side effects are what we consider transient. So once your body gets used to the medication, that process of how quickly food moves from your stomach to your small intestine begins to speed up again. You've also likely altered your eating patterns, so you're eating less, and ultimately those side effects start to subside relatively quickly. And this is also part of the reason with these GLP-1 receptor agonists that we start at a low dose and we do that low dose for a little while and then we slowly increase it up to the max tolerable dose. And that's to get your body used to it and, help, and to help mitigate the potential side effects. Now, some other side effects that are worthy of mentioning just to let you know are things like headaches. Um, people always ask about hypoglycemic events like, oh, we're not, this drug was originally developed for diabetes. For people that don't have diabetes, is this drug safe? Yes, it absolutely is. The mechanism that causes the hypoglycemia or helps to reduce your blood sugars shuts off when your blood sugars are in the normal range. So it's safe for not only people who have diabetes and their blood sugars are well controlled, but also for people who don't have diabetes and their blood sugars are in the normal range. Generally, hypoglycemia will occur with these medications due to some other extenuating circumstance. So diarrhea, vomiting, so you're not eating enough, getting enough calories into your body or you're on other medications such as insulin or what we call insulin secretagogues. These are drugs that push insulin from your pancreas and ultimately will push your blood sugar to go too low. Now, there are also some more serious side effects that can occur. However, these are more like side effects of side effects, if you will. For example, hurting your kidneys. The drug itself, such as Ozempic or Saxenda, doesn't hurt the kidney directly. How the kidney ultimately gets hurt by this drug potentially is that if you experience, say, vomiting, diarrhea, and you become dehydrated because of vomiting and diarrhea, that can ultimately lead to a kidney injury. So the drug doesn't directly cause it. It's more of an indirect effect of side effects produced by the medication leading to dehydration, which then leads to this kidney injury. So a lot of that comes down to context and your own particular situation. It's something that we need to mention because yeah, people did experience these side effects of side effects, if you will, and it is something that is potentially life-threatening and something that needs to be medically managed. So always keeping that in mind, but that's why we need to monitor. That's why we take our time with increasing the dose again and making sure that we're staying on the right track. Now, a final thing that I wanna mention here is that whenever we're looking at these weight loss medications, they're, they're a tool in the toolbox and health, no matter what, is always gotta be our number one priority. And you know what? It's completely understandable after a life of literally trying every single diet, exercise program, supplement that is out there to help you to manage your weight, to finally to come across something that is helping you to actually lose weight and get your weight under control can seem like a miracle. However, if this medication is also causing you to vomit a couple of times a day or even on a daily basis, if it's causing intolerable side effects to the point where you no longer can work and do your regular day-to-day -day activities and it's ultimately affecting your quality of life, well, we're no longer in the realm of health. We're too focused on the number on the scale, which probably is going to be going down if you're vomiting and not able to eat. But that doesn't mean that you're healthy in that sense. You're losing weight, but it's not a healthy weight loss. So we always want to come back to the idea of health. Weight loss is something that, yes, is secondary to a lot of the work that we do, but health is still our number one priority. And if a drug is affecting you negatively, we need to be mindful of that. And yes, there are different strategies and things that we can do to try to mitigate that. But ultimately, we want to look at other modalities or things that can potentially help you. And that's the great thing about this space is that the evidence and the data is growing and we do have other things that can potentially help. And always keeping in mind that no amount of weight loss is worth those levels of side effects. And in reality, if this was a drug for treating a different condition, you would have likely stopped that drug long ago. So health and safety, not only for yourself, but also from us, the perspective of clinicians, needs to always be our number one priority and always something that's front of mind so we can mitigate and manage the side effects and hopefully we can work through them for some people. But ultimately, if the side effects are too bad, we need to stop the medication and look at alternative, um, alternative agents that might be able to help.
Now, before you at me for not talking about the thyroid cancer risk, the black box warning around that, the pancreatitis, pancreatic cancer, and that sort of thing, not to worry, I'm going to cover it in a future video. I just need an entirely separate video to cover that in real detail to give you guys the real understanding of what you actually need to know. And of course, that is a great reminder that if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe down below so that you don't miss it when that video comes out. So until next time, my friends, and don't forget to check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan. We are on just about every social media platform out there. Leave me questions, leave me comments down below, and I'm happy to answer them. And always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks.